Hey everyone, I'm Melissa from Knitting the Stash and this is episode 56 in the series and I'm calling this one Living with Less and you can probably see why or start to see why I am in the yarn room, what was once the yarn room and it is empty and it is echoey and it is very strange and that is partially because as many of you know we're moving um, to a new place in the same town um, with five acres and a barn and all kinds of great stuff uh, but that means cleaning out our current house and uh, getting it staged and ready to go on the market. So the last few weeks we've been painting and doing fix-ups and moving stuff out. And so all of the stuff is no longer here. And we've been kind of like living in this strangely staged house for a little while now. Uh, and today is a, a kind of rainy Sunday and we fixed up and finished up most of our projects. So I have a little time to podcast with you and I'm kind of excited to do so because it's been a long time of, of being away from the camera and being away from knitting. That's as many of you know who know me, that's like it's been too long. Um, and I haven't been able to do as much knitting uh, because I haven't been able to sit down pretty much for the last few weeks uh, between the end of the semester and then setting up the house for moving. Uh, it's been a little bit crazy. Um, so that's my life right now. And for those of you who are new to the podcast, it was probably way too much information. Um, but let me let me start at the beginning, especially for those of you who might be new. Um, I'm Melissa. I'm coming to you from Urbana, Illinois, and I'm a professor there at the university. Um, and this podcast is mostly about knitting, garment modification and design, and a little bit of spinning thrown in there. Uh, I can be found just about everywhere as Knitting the Stash on Ravelry and Instagram, obviously on YouTube, and on the blog, which is knittingthestash.wordpress.com. Uh, so if you're looking for me, that those are plenty of places to find me. I love hearing from you guys. I've gotten some really nice messages about the move, and um, I'm very appreciative of all the support. It's coming along, and things are going to be getting better, <laughs> I hope. Um, and for those of you, of course, who uh, are coming back, it's lovely to see you and to be able to spend some time with you. So thanks for taking the time out to hang out with me in this episode. Uh, I've got a lot to uh, include here, which is kind of exciting given the state of things in our living situation. Uh, Spencer is going to come on and we're going to talk about living with less and what it's like to have the house kind of like cleared out and stashes of stuff if you're a hobbyist and all that good stuff. He's also going to stick with us for the um, rare and hard to find book segment. We, in 2019, we've been finding books that are rare, hard to find, that are about knitting and spinning and whatnot, and uh, he's going to be with us for the that installment today. Uh, and I've got, uh, after that, a fun project that my friend Debbie and I kind of accidentally engaged in, <laughs> which is uh, swap knitting. They'll talk about that. And I've got a funny, cool, new Ravelry group for you to check out um, that I'll talk about at the end of the podcast. So right now I'm going to send you over to Spencer and me talking about living with less and then I'll come back and talk to you about the knitting swap. I'm here with Spencer, which is pretty exciting since uh, <laughs> he's always fun to have on the show and you guys seem to enjoy his oh, company as much nice. as I do. Is that true? And I think so. I think you haven't people... had like, people shutting you down and stuff? No, people always like it when you come on. It's right. exciting, yeah. Okay. yeah. So we are here together to have a little talk about living with less. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking it was called less living. But... <laughs> Sometimes it feels that way, I think. <laughs> so I, uh, in the introduction, you, you heard me talk about the fact that we're moving and the fact that we are have a fairly empty house. And this was once the yarn room and now it's... It looks a little bit like a guest room now. I'm, I know, it's I'm kind, kind of, of happy about kind that. Kind of depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it looks better. But I've been coming up here because it's pretty much the only place we move the couch that I can hang out on. She's kind of so. like, like, you know if you have a cat and you move houses, they go back to the other house? This well, guy. Well, uh, she guy keeps coming back, back to the yarn room and just kind of sitting I mean, here. <laughs> and just kind of looking around and thinking, wow, we painted the walls, we took all the stuff out of it, it's really kind of weird. Soon you'll have a new yarn room. I know, the, ne the new house has a new yarn room. So we thought we'd talk a little bit about what it's like to live in a house <laughs> with less, given that both of us are huge hobbyists and I have a stash. I don't know what you, what do you call a wood shop? You have a wood shop? Yeah, you just have your supplies. Suppl well, you wouldn't call it stash. Oh, I could, but, but that it's would, called that supplies. Would... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. No, I think my stash, actually, if I was going to talk about my stash, it'd be like if I was digging back for like hinges and metal and, okay. but 
actual wood and steel and stuff. That's all your supplies. That would just be yeah, like what's on. Stash. But are they are they the same? Is stash the same as supply and supply? Yeah, same as stash? yeah, because I think it's like you, your materials for building or making. Yeah, you have like 20 cubic yards of yarn normally right here. <laughs> normally, yeah, we wouldn't be able and, to get any close Yeah, you to make stuff with it. And the same thing if I had like steel or wood or whatever, okay. plexiglass. But you haven't gotten rid of your stuff yet. It's not I in dumped a lot. I but it's not in storage. Stuff. No, it's not. the tools are not. I have a reason for that, since we've been working on the house. Mm. The rest of the house, by the way, is like pretty empty. Like the Super realtors who came minimalist. over actually looked at us at one point and said, do you still live here? It's that, it's that empty. Like we have it staged, but it's like... Yeah, we kind of stripped it out. We took all our stuff and put it in storage. And then we took all my stash and put it in my office, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I'm sure is totally like... She was worried about it. Code. You know, to have but all there, your But stuff there were there. ants in the storage area, so that's probably good. Yeah, see, my stuff is safe. I wasn't going to put my yarn and fiber in the storage area. All right, so, so here's my okay. question for you about this less living thing. Um, do you think that people are inclined to work with different hobbies based on their desire to acquire stuff? So, for instance, yeah. like someone who's a graphic designer, they might just use Photoshop and they don't have a bunch of crap around. Well, we have friends who are illustrators. Hi, Amy. <laughs> And she has very, she's very minimalist. She has her computer and she has some, some little things that she likes to look so at. So you think you kind of got into knitting and spinning and stuff because you like spinning wheels well, and I, knitting needles and no, yarn? No, no, I don't. I mean, I think because I like, I learned about yarn and then I started liking it. But when I first started knitting, I thought you had to have a stash. Like if you didn't have a stash, you weren't like a real knitter. So I actually, I had a student who was graduating and she was leaving and she had, she was a knitter. And she's like, I'm selling my stuff, my stash. And I was like... I must acquire a stash. I had nothing at this point. I had, a, I had a little. Do you remember? You I had a little basket with. with like two oh, balls of I yarn in that. it, and that was it. I it was built, like I built Melissa this shelf for her yarn stuff, and it had and like three it had books this basket for the yarn and, and a I little basket was, for the yarn, and it quickly was just blown out. Right. So I bought this stash for my student, and it was like kind of funky weird yarn that like I, I never ended up knitting with but I just, I felt like I yeah. needed a stash because I didn't understand that your stash would just, you just acquired over time if you were that kind well, of Well that's how you stashed out at first, you just yeah. had a bunch of Yeah, and then stuff. I got rid of it. People do that with um, like, I know a guy who bought a blacksmith shop, but the whole damn shop, everything, even though he didn't have, know how to blacksmith. What did he do with it? Well he learned. He learned slowly over time how to blacksmith. But it just, you'd be like whole hog. But whole yeah. yeah, actually I think someone actually just gave it to him. Oh my God, that would be cool. So, you know, people do that. Don't we have that kind of stuff happen in the guild where someone will pass away or someone move out of town and they'll kind of want to just get, like get rid of their stuff, pass it on, and they often leave it to the guild. We just had a big mm. sale for um, Sharon Rapp's stuff um, and made like a ton of money for the education fund for the guild and it was like the distribution of her stuff. It was kind of like a very sad but very cool kind of way of seeing stuff happen like that I guess. Like to see your stash distributed again is also weird. <laughs> so, so I was gonna, uh, go oh, I was just gonna say that um, I do sort of envy people who just have a small kit. Um, a like kit? So there's another word. Like leather workers who yeah. I mean, you can have a lot of leatherworking tools, but it can usually like fit in a suitcase or a briefcase or like yeah. the side of the room or like, whatever. Like I've got like, you know, one of those interchangeable needle sets and it's like everything fits in this little, sorry, that was in your face. Everything fits in this little package. It's really, like a little go bag. It's all you yeah, need. Yeah. Like this is what I, if I'm traveling, I But you've been everything. missing your notions bag. Oh my God. I finally found it. It had all my stitch markers in it. <laughs> I was, I was here, in the middle. Okay. It was just in another. She was freaking out. Where's my bag with all my, I was like, use a pocket knife, just, you know. Right, that's helpful. Okay, so the other thing we've been talking about with this living with less thing, I mean, because we're like, the room is echoey, the house is a little echoey, it's just a little strange for us. I think it's really healthy because I hate clutter more than I hate dirt. It's been pretty good. So I really, yeah. it's like cool. clean surfaces. We can't even mess stuff up because there's nothing here to put on them, really. It's great, <laughs> like I love that part. But we also, as we were cleaning out the house, I, as a joke, I kind of put on the, what's it called? Tidying up with Marie, oh, Marie yeah. Kondo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we were watching Marie Kondo a little bit and kind of laughing and just like, the other day then we were like, what is joy anyway? Like, she what, has that, what you, I'm sure you know her, but she has the idea that you, um, you only keep the stuff that bring you joy. Right. So we were joking and about And you're supposed like, to pick each thing up and like hold it and think to yourself, does it, does this bring me joy? So we were joking about like needing to throw away the toilets. Right. It's like, and you know, like the windows. Yeah, or, you know, like do those things that... really bring you joy? <laughs> Not so much. Like, well, does my canister, does my canister of almond milk, you know, bring me joy? Yeah. Like, it was kind of a. It, it's sort of like know. an appealing way to think about stuff, but completely 
unrealistic and impractical. Right, because you need certain things even if they don't bring you joy. Yeah, like, whatever. That's just the way it is. Plus, like, can't your joy come from something else than like your stuff? I know, like doing stuff with think, stuff. Yeah, yeah I don't know. But we start. We were just even like, what something is your... craptastic could bring you. You could develop joy through that. Now whatever. we're getting deep. Now we're getting real deep. <sighs> but we we had a little conversation about joy and like what what is joy anyway? Like what emotion is that? Like this is, is also because we've been painting so much. Oh my god! And where I think you just the fumes... have these endless conversations. <laughs> I think the yeah. fumes finally got to our brain. <laughs> and you're just talking for like three hours because you have nothing better to do. It's been five weeks of like doing little fix-ups and painting and just craziness. Yeah. So. Anyway, we don't have our stuff, and I feel weird about it, and I know that my stuff's going to stay in my office for another week or two after we move, probably, because it's kind of awkward yeah. to get it. You've been off kilter. Like, you haven't been able to be knitting as much and... Just visiting the yarn. Doing as much stuff. <laughs> but you'll get back to it. But do you visit your stash? Your, your supplies? Like, no. Like, no, like, mm. do you just go look no. through it and be like, what do I have? What no. does it remind me of? Like, mm. so it's not that kind of supply thing for you. No. You know, like, this piece of oak came from... Well, no, Sapling. I, I know the history of all the stuff. Okay, so you do. But I don't like go back and fondle it the way you do. Okay, <laughs> that's a great thing. She will fondle her yarn, man. <laughs> I will find her in here back when this was the yarn room. Like with open Just box going bins through. I'm like, um, there are people downstairs. We're in the middle of a dinner party. You know, like whatever. <laughs> that is so only partially true. <laughs> so Can we talk about that book? You, I know we're going to oh, talk yeah, about that. Okay. okay. So you don't visit your stuff so much and go look through it and no. try to like think I guess it. the only thing for me is that if I'm kind of between projects and I need inspiration for something, like what am I going to work with? I might look through a big box of materials just to be like, oh yeah, I, I could do something, I with, could that. Do something with that. But yeah. usually it's more like I'm digging for something I need, you know, like I really need that fixture, I need something or whatever. Yeah. Now I will say, the, the, maybe the last thing on this topic is that uh, the other day Spencer was like grabbing his keys to go get in the truck. And he said, I'm going out to my friend's place. He's moving and he's selling all of his tools. Now this was after we had emptied out the house. Like, and I just kind of looked at him like, so he was selling some good he's stuff. He's moving, getting rid of his stuff. So you're moving and you're going to take it. Anyway, we ended up with these huge tools in the back of the truck, like so big that it would take a I really awesome bandsaw and a really cool radial arm saw. Probably about 200 pounds each. Oh my god, we moved them into the storage. We moved them straight into the storage <laughs> unit. Awesome. So that, like, we need to, that yeah. is a little bit Basically, like, acquisition even in the, in the midst yeah. of minimalism. I mean, I got rid of a lot of stuff in this process, but I gained a few things. Yeah, well, our free pile went on for days, weeks even. Yeah. So. so anyway, we're living with less right now, and um, thus the yarn room is not quite the same, and the podcast looks a little bit weird, but that's okay. <laughs> um, You've still been doing stuff, though. Cool. Oh god, trying to, but the knitting while moving brain is really... It's, She's been knitting, just not as I've been knitting the same sweater <laughs> over and over again. I think I'm about to cast it on for the fourth oh, time. Oh, but that, that happened because, with the last one, didn't it? No, 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 this Two is just like, ago. I just could not... Yeah, like every there. it, There's like a time when I'm like, oh, I can knit now. So I sit down to knit and I'm kind of like flustered. I've been thinking about yeah. paint fumes. Anyway and I cast on the wrong number of stitches, or I tried this cast on and i following one instructions and then halfway through I start following some other instructions. Maybe you need like, all your clutter around you. Maybe. Messing with your brain. Yeah, maybe that's the it. The minimalism. <laughs> Minimalism's killing me. Okay, so so that's our little our thoughts on minimalism. But the other segment of this podcast that um, you guys often know about, I'm sorry, I, I keep like itching my nose because it's allergy season and we've both been sneezing like crazy. It's just been like, Oh, I don't know what's going on if they're spraying things or things something. are booming them up, but I'm just, just like, or something. oh, something good. Yeah. Um, so the other part of this podcast that uh, I always, segment that I always do on here is the kind of rare and hard to find knitting books or spinning books. It's a little bit nerdy. It's my nerdy section. I love it. <laughs> and I think a lot of you guys like it too. And usually I have books, but because of the whole living with less, I don't have like a huge stash of books that I can pull up and show you guys. But what I do have is a magazine that came from so one of cool. these guild the kind of estate stuff sales. So, and because it's about men's sweaters, I thought Spencer so should great. be here for the company. It's hot. Okay. This, <laughs> this, I'm showing you the back. This is the Bravo Brunswick <laughs> Book of Men's Sweaters, circa 1970. All right, look okay, at this. You know what would be so cool? This is, this is the stuff, man. I would like it if you could 
you and maybe some of your crew could like knit up these sweaters and get a bunch of dudes get all to, the like, guys to, to like remake these pictures. <laughs> like I want to be this guy with the with grass the and all this stuff. Or like... the guy with the tennis racket. There's like this dude with a tennis racket down here. Here, hold it for a second. It'll focus, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's go. just so that great. Guy. I mean, they're really. This guy's really doing it too. I mean, they're 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 into their they're into their burn here a little bit. So have the sweaters really changed that much? You know, I or think for just men. The I think for men the sweaters. The sweaters changed. don't look that bad. It's just maybe the colors or whatever. No, I mean, I was looking at the history of it's men's sweaters dudes. a little bit. I mean, this dude right here. You gotta get it. In this guy is just so awesome, and you know, but he the knows sweater, he's awesome but the sweater he's itself sweater. looks kind of classic. Yeah, it's right? just an Aaron's just butter. Same up. with this guy. He's got like the striped sleeves, you know? That's like a pretty modern looking sweater. Um, there are a few in here that are kind of like a little bit old school. Like that guy, not so much. What about the actual patterns and stuff? Well, so the patterns are, um, and, and this is um, East Brunswick, or this is Brunswick Worsted get the Mills thing? Incorporated. Oh, you got it from the Guild. Yeah. So they're out of Connecticut and South Carolina. There was this mill that you can look online and find pictures of the mill, like kind of like, and I think it's it's either defunct or it's still going up. Mm -hmm. I can't quite figure it out. So the mill out. puts out the catalog. The mill put out this catalog, and the the patterns are kind of interesting because they um, there's they're set up so that if you use different weights of their yarn, you can. I don't know if you can see this here. There's, I'm trying to be gentle with it. There's like group A, group B, and group C. So they allow you to use either fingering weight yarn, sport weight yarn, or worsted weight yarn to make these sweaters, which is a really cool idea, and that takes a heck of a lot more sweater math to do. Um, but almost all the patterns have that kind of like grouping. So if you were like, I'm gonna make you a fingering weight sweater, I'm gonna make you a worsted weight sweater out of my stash, right? I'll pull whatever I have, and then I could still use these patterns to make the sweater, which is kind of cool. It's kind of above my level of sweater making, but oh come on, you make your sweater's coming along. My sweater's coming along. It is, it's and instead of charts, <laughs> instead of charts, they they call them graphs. So these are some of the graphs that they have, but they're they're just charts for the so it's um, a good book color. Yeah. But you could take some of these <clears> and maybe update them. I think so. And the one this you were pointing to. This guy is so cool. This guy. This dude. I mean, Check it's, that just guy a, out. it's just an Aaron Waite sweater. It's actually called Aaron Sweater, style number 6615. The sunglasses, <laughs> so, man. And it's the it's just the styling of these that's so interesting. The tight pants and the kind of like... It's great. The, the like... That's a centerfold. There's a Center centerfold in this freaking knitting this book. This kind of like devil may care kind of like <laughs> attitude. Little James which, Bond. Yeah, it is a little James Bond with that cap that's kind of just like it's jauntily good. put on the fore on the forehead. But they also have some kids. So here's like a young man in a sweater that is actually knit. Um, you knit it kind of like across this way and then you pick up oh, stitches yeah. and knit down. That's cool. Which is kind of cool. And then there's a soccer ball kid. Where's soccer ball kid? Oh, this guy. This guy, they want to have bare feet. I just don't understand the whole, like... That's good. Let's put no, the bare feet good. in there. He looks good. Nobody wants to see bare feet in <laughs> knitting model. He's got an ascot it's on. It's like, it's not okay. And then there's soccer ball guy. Right there. It's Which, you know... Uh, it's not even... Maybe it's not even a regulation soccer ball. But there's tennis guy again. He's wearing a different Aaron sweater. A tennis sweater, in fact. So, yeah. And I looked a little bit into the history of sweaters. And it's kind of like there was, you know, Gansey sweaters, fisherman sweaters, like really practical, practical garments. And then um, once it was one of the um, royal family guys, let me see who was it, it was um, the Prince of Wales in 1921 wore this Fair Isle kind of jumper and started promoting British yarns. And then there were some movie stars in the 50s and 60s that started wearing different kinds of sweaters, the turtleneck and the... You know, like the tennis sweater mm. and all that kind of stuff. So, mm. like a lot of the styles for men have kind of come through the ages mm. and kind of switched up. So, in here, I mean, they advertise it by saying they have tennis sweaters and like golf sweaters, and you know, mm. so it's kind of like a thing. I think men still wear tennis sweaters, like some yeah. men yeah, somewhere, yeah. right? Well, that style of just the v -neck the V neck, which yeah. is this guy. You put a tie on underneath it. This guy, yeah, yeah. I guess you would put a tie. I mean, it's like what you'd wear to the. Country club or something? You'd wear it all the time. You can even wear those with a, if you're wearing a suit, you could wear like a thin oh, sweater right. like that with your tie. Oh, right. If it weren't this color, probably. This is more like tennis colors. Well, that's like back in the day. What is this, 68 or something? 70. 70. 1970. So yeah. it's a little classic. Yeah. I mean, would you wear any of these? No. Alright, let me see. Yeah, which one? Because I kind of like the idea of us all knitting one of these sweaters and having our guys model it. You gotta really do it. It's hilarious. Like, wonderful. 
Okay, this sweater right here, Mr. Green, the green dude. You'd wear Mr. Green? It just Green. looks like any sweater. I don't, I don't see any difference yeah. with that sweater. I thought you'd like, like the striped sleeve one on the back. That one's good. It's that just one the, reminds me of you Something about bit. the piece of grass. Well. That you just, you can't get by. Or wheat? I think it's I think a it's, full, I think it's actually full it's grown it's piece. Wheat. Something about the wheat that just is yeah. distracting. So, so yeah. They're not that dated. I bet if you had a catalog of women's sweaters from that time. I almost, I, I think I bought this for like 50 cents or something. Would they be Should've more dated one. or would it be? I think they're a little bit more dated. Actually, I think I do have a few of them, but they're in, they're in the storage at my office. When I find them, I'll pull them out. It'll be fun to see. Stash the difference storage. In the stash storage. So anyway, thanks for coming on. Yeah. And doing two segments of the podcast today. That was pretty sweet. Whoa. I get paid double for that. Yeah, totally. I'll slip you a 20 later. <laughs> All right, good okay. luck with the rest of your podcast. We'll send you back to the See ya. Wellness, yeah. All right. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed those two segments of the podcast. Uh, it was really nice to have Spencer on here as usual. And of course, I kind of like that idea of us all knitting the uh, sweaters from a book of men's sweaters. So if anybody's interested, maybe I'll start up a Ravelry thread and <laughs> just for fun, why not? I mean, who knows what might happen in the knitting world? You guys are all just about as crazy as I am sometimes. <laughs> um, okay, so the, the uh, last couple things for today um, are about, the first one's about swap knitting. So if you've been watching since episode one, or if you've ever gone back and watched my introductory um, episode, you may have encountered the Entrelac scarf. Now this was a scarf that I was knitting. It was the first knitting project I really engaged in when I got back into knitting in 2012. Um, and it is a pattern uh, by Lisa Schroyer. It's called the Basic Entrelac Scarf. And I'm gonna pull it up here so that I can show you um, this photo of it. It's not even that great of a photo on Ravelry. It's kind of, it's kind of funky that way. So there it is. That's the Basic Entrelac Scarf. And it's by Lisa Schroyer. And I, uh, <laughs> I have no actual recollection of how I found this scarf when I first started knitting again, but I saw a picture of it and it was a free pattern. And I was kind of excited because number one free pattern and number two, uh, Entrelac. And I thought, why not start knitting with Entrelac? Not knowing anything about just kind of like, you know, let's maybe start with the basics. Yeah, I, I don't really do that in my life. Um, so I picked up this pattern for the Entrelac scarf, and then I went on YouTube and found the best teacher in this uh, woman whose handle was I Knit With Cat Fur. Not kidding, she still puts videos out, and she is a great teacher. And I, she was knitting an Entrelac scarf, and I would basically turn her video on, play it, do the five stitches I could manage, and then rewind it and keep going. And she led me through how to do Entrelac. Of course, I also bought a book and I was trying to read it that way and everything, but her videos, I Knit With Cat Fur, were the best videos for this Entrelac scarf and the best way of like learning something new. And that's kind of how I found YouTube and knitting people on YouTube doing tutorials and it's a long story. But anyway, I never finished the Entrelac scarf and I put it in a bag and uh, with the needles and the pattern and when we were moving, I was just like, well, I'm cleaning stuff out and I brought it to my guild buddies at the meetup and I said, here's all the giveaway stuff. Tons of like needles and extra yarn and all kinds of different little notions and this bag of Entrelac scarf. Well, Debbie, dear Debbie, picked it up and she's like, oh, that looks cool. If, if nobody else wants that, I'll take it. And she's like, maybe I'll finish it. And I was like, oh, that's cool, great. Somebody will finish the scarf, why not? And about a, a week later, I got an email from her saying, you know, I had to go up two needle sizes to be able to match your gauge. I thought, wow, okay, I am a tight knitter. That's, that's for sure. Um, and she uh, finished the scarf. So here it is. This is it. This was the first knitting project I ever started and didn't finish. And it is completed now, thanks to Debbie. So here it is in all its glory. An entrelac, for those of you who don't know, um, basically you knit this kind of thing and then you are picking up stitches and knitting in the other direction, right? As you go along, you're kind of knitting these chunks and they you, you get this different directional thing by picking up stitches and knitting in a different direction each time. Uh, and this yarn is a self-striping yarn. I think I used the yarn that was called for in the pattern which is, I think it's like a Noro yarn, uh, and I think I picked it up at one of the big box stores back in the day. Um, and I am pretty excited to see this finished. And our consistency with stitches is actually pretty good. I think you can see it all the way through. 
and it creates this really awesome basket weave and the yarn that is um, kind of continually changing color just creates this beautiful effect of almost like you're just doing really cool kind of color work. So that is the Angelac scarf that Debbie finished and she, her idea was like, well, hey, I finished that Angelac scarf, why don't I give you something of my knitting and you could finish it as well. So she's given me this, which is a, she thinks it's cotton, a cotton top um, that is really quite beautiful. It has some nice details um, and I don't know what the pattern is and I don't know who the designer is. So if I can find that out, I'll let you know, but it's a V-neck kind of top. And all she wants to do is finish the sleeves and the neck. And she tried, it looked like, with some kind of um, really wiry kind of yarn here. And it doesn't give much elasticity to the neck. It's really quite tough. And she didn't want to, you know, you just get kind of discouraged with these projects. Just like, either you're done with them because you feel like you've learned all you're going to learn, or you're just bored of them, or you're just like, it gets set aside for something else, and then you never go back to it, or you can't remember, or all that kind of stuff that we all have, right? Um... And she, it's just a pretty simple fix to finish these sleeves off, so I'll take care of that. I'm going to pop out this neckline and redo that. And then I think it'll be done because she just wants to keep it as a tank top. So that's even simpler than finishing an entrelock scarf. Uh, but it's a cool idea to kind of do a little swap knitting. And I kind of think that it might be something we could all get on board with, right? Like if you have a whip in a bag or a basket sitting somewhere that you're just not really feeling anymore, maybe find a friend and maybe maybe what we need to do is get these whips out there in the world and have somebody else help us finish them. You know, either it's about motivation or it's about technique or it's about knowledge or it's about whatever, but you know, if these whips can get out in the world and into somebody else's hands and then they get finished, I think that's a pretty sweet thing. So swap knitting, totally encourage it. Uh, and I'll let you know how this project goes. Uh, and what a great idea, Debbie. Thanks for sharing with that, and thanks for finishing the Entrelac scarf and giving me a little FO to show in the midst of moving. Um, so that, that is Swap Knitting, and I hope you guys will all jump in. I'll start a Ravelry thread about it just to, I don't know, track uh, anybody who wants to get in on some Swap Knitting. You can list your uh, whips up there. Uh, and if somebody wants to get in on it, then you guys can communicate through the Ravelry thread and through your email or whatever else you want to do. And maybe this will start a revolution and maybe all the whips in the world will be <laughs> finished somehow, right? Um, it could be pretty cool. All right. Uh, in the last little bit of podcast time that I have here, I wanted to tell you about a new Ravelry group that I got involved in and uh, I think it's kind of pretty darn cool. It's called Ints... <laughs> In Swimodo 2019, and it stands for International Sweater a Month Dodecathon. Say that ten times fast, right? Um, but if you go, to, I'll put it on the screen here. If you go to the International Sweater a Month Dodecathon uh, Ravelry group, you will see and find a group of really cool knitters who are garment knitters, and they're trying to complete a sweater a month in 2019. Now, in 2018, <laughs> I think I knit. 10 garments. So I thought I'd try this out because I thought two more in 2019, not a problem. I bet I could squeeze it in. Now I am, I'm on number five now, I think, is that right? Or number four. I'm on number four because I did, um, the beekeeper cardigan. Uh, I did the, um, Lian Lau sweater and I did the Termok sample for June cashmere. So those, oh, and I did the red pearl. No, I'm on, the, I'm on number five. So I did uh, four garments so far this year and I'm on number five and that will be um, the one I'm working on which is Rumo. Um, and that one's just missing the sleeves at this point. And then I'm also doing a sample test for Albina that I can't quite tell you about yet, but it's a new colorwork sweater. So there are a couple coming up that um, should get me to five and six, which will be pretty cool. Uh, this move has put a little cramp in my style, but I'm still hopeful to be participating in the international sweater a month dodecathon. And if you want to get involved too, I will put the link to the Ravelry group over in the show notes. 
So lots of information this time around, lots of chatter and fun conversation. There was an FO <laughs> nip by half me and half Debbie. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you're given some thought to living with less and whether it's not, it's something you really want to do. Uh, I'm kind of looking forward to getting my stash back to be quite honest. So, um, and setting up the new yarn room and maybe the next podcast will be from the new yarn room. Maybe. We'll, we'll hope so. I'm hoping to get back on a regular schedule now and be with you in a couple of weeks. So for all of you out there, head over to Ravelry. Uh, if you're new, introduce yourself. Get in on the knitting swap, swap knitting uh, thread. Get in on the um, sweater a month thread uh, over on the other Ravelry group. And I hope you enjoy your knitting and uh, your time with friends and family and have a great spring and summer until I see you again in a couple of weeks. All right, take care. Bye-bye.